this is a bonus video okay in this video i'm going to talk a little bit about the derivation and the ideas behind the relative velocity relationship when you have two objects uh, colliding and have elastic collision at first let's observe i have mass one and mass two okay and um, they have different weight or different mass respectively and i gave them a slightly different velocity so the speed of the one at the back is faster than the speed of the one in front so that when i allow them to collide so this is before collision after collision they will still both travel in the same direction okay and this is when the collision is perfectly elastic well no loss in kE. I translated this into the into this drawing behind you, okay? And so today we want to see if we can prove the relative velocity equation based on what we understand about a perfectly elastic collision. So if my collision is perfectly elastic, anyway, What is conserved? Ah? Did you have kinetic energy? Oh? I have no kinetic energy. Okay. So I will say the sum of the initial kinetic energy will be the same as the sum of the final kinetic energy. Okay. Ke conserved. So I'm going to write an equation here. I'll call this half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. All right. And of course, the first order of business is to tell all the half to please go away. Thank you. Okay. We don't need the half anymore. And I will do a bit of rearranging. I will put all the values of m1 on one side and all the values of m2 on the other side. Okay. So I will have m1 u1 square minus m1 v1 squared on the other side i will have m2 v2 square minus m2 u2 square okay i can solve for the half already i'm kind of stuck here because i have no way of uh, you know eliminating my m's okay so i'm going to now have to uh, call out the second conservation law okay so since there is no you know this is obviously a collision. There's no external forces acting on the system, acting on the M1, M2 system. So momentum is conserved. Hmm. Teacher, momentum conserved. Yeah, momentum conserved. So if momentum conserved, sum of initial is equal to sum of final. Any accountant is happy. Everything conserved. Money in equal money out. Momentum initial equal to momentum final. So good. So I have M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Hopefully now it's clear why I keep them in the same direction so that, you know, I don't have any negative sign. You know, I don't like negative signs. All right. So in this case, uh, what we're looking at is M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Okay, I got two equations and I really have to simplify them. Okay, but before I do that, I think I will rearrange that. Okay, so I'm going to put all the M1 on one side. So on one side, I have M1 U1 minus M1 V1. And on the other side, I will have M2 V2 minus M2 U2. Okay, basically I'm applying the same procedure here as well. So we now have two equations, equation one, equation two, and I want to simplify them a bit. So if you recall the relative velocity equation, there's no m, okay? So mm, I'm going to factorize the m first, okay? Let me create more space. Okay, let's factorize the m, okay? So I'm going to take out m1. What I have while here is u1 square minus v1 square. And I'll take out m2. What I have here is v2 square minus u2 squared. Mm. Hey, we can factorize some more, you know, because, uh, you see, this one, if I factorize the same thing, I have m1 bracket u1 minus v1 
And here I'll have M2 bracket V2 minus U2. You see this one here, like A square minus B square. And you see this one here, A minus B. Oh, we can cancel. Yes, yes, we can. But I factorize some more first. Lah. So M1, U1 plus V1, U1 minus V1. Okay, then this is M2, V2 plus U2, V2 minus U2. Okay, so I'm ready to divide. So let's call this equation 1, I call this equation 2. So I'll take equation 1, divide by equation 2. Okay, 1 divide by 2. Okay, lah. so I have M1, U1 plus V1, bracket, U1 minus V1 is equal to M2, V2 plus U2, V2 minus U2, divided by M1, U1 minus V1. So satisfying, right? Because you can see that they will cancel out. M2, V2 minus U2. So by cancelling out the common factors like this one, this one, and this one, this one, and this one, this one, and this one, this one. I will have the relative velocity equation. U1 plus V1 is equal to V2 plus U2. But remember how uh, we were talking about relative velocities, right? So let me rearrange and put all the initial conditions, which is the U together. Okay, so I have U1 minus U2 which is the initial condition, and then, and then, remember, remember, U1 and U2 is the initial condition, and V1, V2, final condition, I put on the other side, lah, huh? and I have V2 minus V1. So this is your relative uh, velocity equation. To be honest, uh, I prefer to have the prefix the same, so that it's easier on my brain, lah. but everyone is different. It can also be written as u1 minus u2 is negative is equal to negative v2 or v1 minus v2 because then i can say the relative speed of approach because u1 and u2 they're approaching each other right if we look at this okay let me zoom in so this is the speed of relative speed of approach between these two is equal to the relative speed of separation. So, I, I remember things in sentences. Speed of approach is equal to negative relative speed of separation. Yeah, and I prefer the one, two, one, two. So if it's the first body, you start with the same object first, followed by the second one. Okay, just make sure you know how to use the equation can now. All right. Do you need to know the proof? Obviously not. You're watching the bonus video because you want to know where the equation is coming from. And this will be helpful and give you confidence when using the equation. All right. Second part. We're going to talk a little bit about some ratio called coefficient of restitution. Teacher, what, what, what coefficient? Coefficient of restitution. What is coefficient of restitution? Well, this one is also our friend, I know Newton. Ah, he when he came up with this, he thought to himself, well, there's a ratio here that we can use. So he coined coefficient E. Now you look at this one, ah. Okay. E can be said to be modulus the relative velocity. modulus, the relative velocity or the relative speed after collision divided by relative speed before collision. In other words, my value of E is actually equal to before after collision, right? So it's V2 minus V1. And it's modulus anyway, so it doesn't matter which one you take and minus in this case. All right, so modulus v2 minus v1 divided by modulus, you can take u2, but if I just uh, look at this one, u1 minus u2, u2 minus u. Doesn't matter, okay? 
But you can see, right, from here, if it's perfectly elastic, and I ratio these two for this one, perfect, perfectly elastic. Your coefficient of restitution is equal to one. Okay, meaning the kinetic energy transfer is perfect. There is no loss during the collision. But of course, this is a perfect scenario. Okay, what are the possible values of E? Okay, so case number one. For E equal to one. Okay, E equal to one is perfectly elastic collision. Meaning KE conserved. So no loss in kinetic energy, no? Okay. Teacher, what about E less than 1? Yeah. Can E be negative? Okay, we'll talk about that later. E between 0 and 1, this is called inelastic collision. How inelastic? Uh? It depends, no? Depends on the ratio. So if we look at the simulation that I've started off today's uh, derivation video with, Okay, you can see here I have 100% elasticity, meaning my coefficient of restitution is 1. If I decrease the coefficient of restitution, it means that I'm losing kinetic energy. So maybe I drag this to, I don't know, halfway. And let's see what happens if I uh, allow it to collide halfway. You can see the kinetic energy is less. Okay, Let's repeat again. And let me increase to only 10%. Uh, it's left. So during the collision, wow, oh, so slow now. All right, ding, ding, ding. And then all the energy is like trapped and lost inside that collision. So this E between zero and one, uh, it depends on the collision, depends on the nature, on the type of balls that are colliding. Okay. But you know what's the interesting thing? E can be greater than one. Teacher, why is E greater than one? You mean if E is bigger than one, then the relative speed is bigger? Then before collision, that means the kinetic energy is more? Did you, did we create energy? No, 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 no. If E is more than one, okay, I'm going to write here, special case. So usually, E is equal to one or E is equal to zero to one in elastic collision. But here are some special cases. For example, E can be bigger than one. So for these special cases, when E is bigger than 1, it's not that you create energy, it's explosion. Remember explosion? So you have another source of energy that converts itself to kinetic energy. So there has an increase in energy in this situation. So I'll write down here for you, this one could possibly be some kind of a, a explosion after collision. Explosion after collision and in fact if let's say for example you have a very very rigid collision right like for example something that is very hard and you get a lot of kinetic energy this e can be very big it can approach infinity for a perfect explosion of a rigid system explosion after ke after collision so this one here means um other energy normally chemical, will convert to Ke. So not only Ke is more than the same, Ke actually increases. Okay, whereas for inelastic collision just now, Ke not conserved. Not conserved here means uh, your Ke will decrease. Ke conserved here means Ke the same of your system. Okay. So maybe, for example, let's say I throw a grenade to the wall. So there's the momentum of the grenade, but the grenade also will explode. So normally it's a kind of like consideration of something that collide. Oh, I throw two grenades together, two bombs together. Wow, two bombs throw together. So after the explosion, ah, they will get more energy. Makes sense, right? You throw two explosives together. Okay. So another special case would be E can be... Uh, Less than zero, uh, teacher can. E less than zero means what? Uh? Negative. This one uh, is a colli collision where the speed of separation, I cannot use modulus already for this one, okay? Where the speed of separation 
it's actually nobody changed direction. Okay. So in other words, um, how should I put this? Uh? I'll give you an example. Uh, but these are totally won't come out in, in CIE syllabus. So example like bullet passing through the body of jello or a block of jello. So complete penetration. Okay. So this one, the object passes through each other. There is no engagement, meaning there is no colliding. There's no deformation. There is no normal reaction force. You push me, I push you, and then we change velocity. So bullet passing through jello. I wouldn't say there's other energy. I would say that uh, both objects may not exert forces or enough forces up. so there's no full engagement hmm. how should I write this it may not fully engage or okay. fully interact okay so what happens when e equal to zero ah uh -huh. okay la. I think e equal to zero maybe I put here la. e equal to zero we call this perfectly inelastic collision. Teacher, what means perfectly inelastic collision? Line. We look at the simulation again. Okay. So if it's zero, this one is dropped to zero percent. Let's see what happens. After collision, they move together. The, oh, Oh, teacher, teacher, the move, the stick together one. Yes, correct. You remember last time in high school? Maybe your teacher tell you if the collision is inelastic, the object will stick together. Ah, yeah, this stick stick together one is when the coefficient of restitution is zero. So in this case, KE is still not conserved. And also, the objects stick together. slash travel together. All right. So with that in mind, when we look at a collision or any kind of case of collision like this, we can derive the coefficient of restitution assuming a, co a collision is perfectly elastic. So we apply Ke conserved, we have one equation. Momentum conserved, we have two equations. And then we just do some algebraic factorizing and cancelling, dividing. We'll arrive at this equation. If I take this, divide by this, I'll get 1. This means a perfectly elastic collision has an E of 1. This E is called the coefficient of restitution. Okay, so we are actually taking modulus V2 minus V1. Or if you don't want modulus, there's just relative speed uh, after collision divided by relative speed before collision okay so yeah so in this case there are many possible cases of your e if your e is one perfectly elastic all the ke is still inside the system between zero and one they are inelastic they don't always have to travel uh, stick together they may travel apart the ke will decrease as you can tell from the simulation that i've shown you all right and if E is zero, this is where your objects stick together. Perfectly inelastic. There's a sticking thing. And sometimes there are special cases, like for example, KE increase more. This is because maybe I throw two bombs together and they explode. They have more KE because there's some form of explosion or any chemical or other energy that adds to the KE of the system. And sometimes it can be less than zero, like bullet passing through the block of the jello. So there's no proper interaction. Lah. So something weird is going on. We need the other things. We need to consider friction instead of normal reaction force. Or we need to consider drag force. Mm -hmm. So that one is, all this not in your syllabus. Huh? This is just a bonus video to show you the different kinds of things that could happen when two bodies or two or more bodies come together. All right. Good on you for learning something extra. Stay curious and keep asking questions. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.